Hi. So today I'm going to show you a tutorial about using a bass loop and creating your own sound with a bass loop from a sample pack. So the first thing you're going to need is a bass loop. So you're going to search a bass loop in a sample pack. I already found mine. I already input ported it into the reason as an audio track, just normal audio track. And uh, this is how it sounds like without any process processing on it. So it's just a normal bass loop from a drum and bass sample pack and, and it sounds okay but you can make it your own by adding a couple of effects. So for first thing I did I add, added a edge red. I added that. If you don't have it it's uh, too bad for you but you're not gonna get the sound as as it's supposed to be. And then it's just reset the device okay Japan filter 2H2N with both filters 2H2N then the first filter frequency is the, is for the movement in the low frequency so you're gonna search a low frequency it doesn't matter which number I'm not gonna give you a number because then you have the F FM knob, that's the knob that's gonna make the frequency move, so just put it all the way up and add a little bit of resonance and then pan it a little bit to the left 38% something the second filter, make sure it's in parallel mode then the fre frequency of the filter is now a little bit higher but still in the base area there somewhere it's just to let the two filters move so now if you hear it with the edge red put the FM on from the filter 2 you hear the movement in the bass coming yeah my master out is clipping but it doesn't matter uh, so that's the first thing I did and th that's all I did just search the frequency, the, the frequency knob, keep twisting it until you hear like it really affects the sound the way you want it to suit. So with both filters, but never use the same frequency. Then I also added a little bit of OP amp distortion, a little bit, not too much, 0 0.1, 1 1.3 or something dB. Then it adds a little bit crush to it all. You start to hear in the, the real effect but it's supposed to go a little bit softer here because it's already clipping my master so make sure if you add distortion here that you will check your level here that you compensate for it okay so next thing I did just to add to, to make my um, low signal mono I just add a stereo imager okay and I put everything below 100 Hz completely to mono and then the high band I just widen it a little bit that's just for the stereo image to put the frequencies where I want them to be and then if you hear it, it does, it's not so much effect you hear it but you, you, must, so you must search for it so then I added a maximizer that was just only to boost the signal just a M class maximizer 4 milliseconds look ahead soft clip on and boost the input okay next this is key to the sound this is the most important step I'm, I'm using an alligator effect and it's a triple gate effect and uh, I totally reset it don't need anything from the device itself I put the pattern uh, off I don't want the pattern to play and then I start playing with the gate triggers and as I have set it up here, over here on my uh, Icon Q Com Pro if I make an audio track in a uh, site the rack for the alligator then you suddenly see here that's only with the Icon Q 
Qcom Pro, but if you have something else, you can route it how you want it. Uh, this one is the low trigger, this one is the mid trigger, this one is the high trigger. I know it's a little bit uh, rear, weird, but that's the way they set it up. I didn't set it up, so okay. So, as you push on the bottom gate trigger, then you start playing the loop from the base and you make sure that it's on loop otherwise you're gonna have to press stop and play every time again so you play the loop you unmute the alligator for sure now you hear nothing because all the gates are closed if I push a button doesn't matter what which one of those three the three that are not, not lit here then that corresponding gate opens so this one is the low gate this one is mid gate, this one is high gate. And now I'm gonna search with the frequency knob of the gate itself where I want to low frequency to sit at. And as you can hear I'm just gonna put the sub bass in only in the low gate only the sub bass like 200 200 hertz maximum on 178 hertz is this okay that's the first one the second gate it's the mid gate I'm gonna I'm gonna wanna put the frequency not all the way down like not as low as the sub but the, the sub was 178 let's say that the mid is uh, 700 or something yeah 700 and then you can hear I have here the sub and here the from 700 to up to, but it's a bandpass filter so it's, it's a narrow peak then bandpass and the uh, last one, the high, and this one is key for the really crunchy nerve style basses. You put the frequency also with the same until it starts sounding crunchy, like like this. Uh, yeah, you, you hear it with every sound; it's different. Okay, and then if you have that, then it's time to have fun. Then it's time to use the gate triggers that you have on your interface or it doesn't matter what on your controller. You're going to use those and play in tempo with the song. And then you, if you add a loop, a drum loop, I'm just going to add a simple drum loop. Um, not uh, why or not three drum. Sorry, I'm just gonna add a re a octorex, a simple drum loop, and I'm gonna unmute it here, and then this not this not a drum bass loop, but uh, I can use one. But I'm okay. I'm just gonna use a drum bass loop here. Okay. Okay. Here you have a drum and bass loop, but uh, not this one. Yeah, this one is good. Okay. So we have our loop, and then we it's time to start playing. So make sure your alligator track is selected, and then. So that was my tip on the alligator. If you like it, thumbs up. Uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel and see you next time. Bye.